The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. We have come to the point where people are now questioning the essentiality of things and their relevance in the modern world. As Manila and its surrounding provinces declared another strict lockdown a few weeks ago, people tend to continue the blame game ad infinitum without hearing the other side which begs the question what is real what is true what is essential what is necessary my name is Ian Rignon an independent media practitioner freelance writer and content creator and today we try to contextualize these questions if not answer them outrightly with that said let's start the video <laughs> So, we were made aware of the online banter regarding logos and songs related to the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Catholic Christianity in the Philippines, and I would be dealing with this for at least the first half of this video. There seems to be a clash between the churches of Manila and Cebu in the promotion of such an event. To be brutally honest, I don't really want to care about dabbling into the logo and song nonsense. But for the longest time, a certain gut feeling is continuously haunting my conscience. And so I have decided to tackle this once and for all. Now, I ask, which is more important? Logos, externals, and, and legitimacy of certain expressions of a certain event, which, don't get me wrong, uh, is important for a unified approach in the long run or the concept of the said event do catholics even know christianity arrived on our on our shores 500 years ago do filipinos even know that the first contact of our native ancestors to spaniards happened 500 years ago aside from the obvious facts it is indeed a bother but we could make the celebration meaningful if we take it to heart and not just display it and don't even get me started with the debate about the first mass that took place in our islands i know there are two claimants to it but that's another video for another day and one more thing this issue only shows how divided the philippine church still is if the logo song and first mass issue was a borderline toxic banter between filipino catholics the issue about the very event of the 500th anniversary of the first contact between native Filipinos and Spaniards is outrightly described as mudslinging with a hint of vitriol. Naysayers indicated that the Spaniards should not have messed with the natives of these previously unnamed islands in the very first place. But let me say this real talk right here, right now. If not for Spain, there would be no Philippines to talk about in the very first place. The islands that comprise this common home that we all have would just be a loose confederation of regionalist tribes ruled by megalomaniac warlords who would kill their next door neighbor if it meant more land, more resources, more prestige for him and his realm. If we were not the Philippines, we would have been fought over by the Malays and the Indonesians until this day. This outrightly vitriolic mindset only shows how divided a nation we still are. So much for what is the truth behind the first contact. But before we continue, I would like you to consider subscribing to this channel by clicking the big red subscribe button down below or below the video and making it gray. Then please ring the notification bell by selecting all. Also, I would try to make these videos as frequently as possible, but just a disclaimer, 
I am not paid to do this and um, I would appreciate it if you would leave a like and share this video as I am resolved to create content like this which is way different from the content you see with most Filipino YouTubers or with YouTubers of Filipino origin. Also, I would like you guys to buy me a coffee. If you would ask me in the comments where my place is so you could literally ship it, that is fine. Thank you very much for your generosity. But if you can't buy me a coffee literally, you could still do at buymeacoffee.com slash ian to do so. That's with an N, not an N. -ye. I know it sucks to have an accent uh, to the spelling of your name, but that's life. Any amount of cups you donate would absolutely be appreciated. With that said, let's get back to the topic. Now on what I consider as the main topic of my piece. Just this holy week, a delivery rider was stopped by a barangay officials for allegedly violating COVID-19 ru uh, curfew rules just because he was delivering lugaw or Filipino-style rice porridge to a place in that barangay's jurisdiction. A viral video was later shared where it was revealed that a female barangay official argued that lugaw was not essential, with an emphasis on the Tagalog and general Filipino languages ter Article C pertaining to a person. Hindi essential si Lugao. That's what she said. The fact that such a person would not allow for uh, food deliveries of any kind other than known establishments, which might have been on closing time as well by that time, within curfew hours, while it was said that it, it, it is otherwise essential, is beyond reasoning. Is this how stupid our people have become? Also, without naming names and without dealing with personality politics, many punters have also chimed with uh, the incident and, as always, tried to put their side on the right and their sworn rivals on the wrong. Without being a grammar Nazi, I suppose the female public servants should have just used the article ang to depict the proper context of the word lugao. She might have just said, hindi essential ang lugaw, but real talk, essential ang lugaw, dahil masarap siya. Gusto ko ng tikman eh. What beggars believe more than just how essential food and delivering it to people who were either advised or forced to stay in their homes, depending on who you ask, is the fact that Places of worship were banned from any religious services as it was categorized by the government as a form of mass gathering. And for many Catholics here in this country, what's worse is that the strict lockdowns happened during Holy Week. No matter how cooperative the Catholic Church was in following strict measures. My initial reaction to it was that if the strict measures would not be implemented in this year's Ramadan, or if it if it was, but not on the anniversary of other religious groups, a backlash from the people would be expected. Fortunately enough, cooler, saner, and more reasonable minds and brains prevailed and that a compromise was reached. Religious services would only be, limit, be limited to one a day which in the liturgical instructions of the church was actually the norm for Holy Week, not the exception, especially in the Paschal Triduum. It also made me think about the absolute vitriol netizens spew out against religious leaders and lay adherents, specifically Catholic ones, for their insisting on public worship services such as the Mass. Most of them say it's all about the money, the abuloy, the, uh, the collection, and all that. Yung sweldo ni father, blah, 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 blah. But then again, I ask myself, are they dishing out this banter just because they're not going to church on Sundays pre-COVID? Are they not going to church at all? That's why they insist on just praying at home until the pandemic ends? Because... To be brutally honest, I am sick and tired of praying within the confines of my home. 
yes, ladies and gentlemen, food and church services are essential. We all experience hunger, both physical and spiritual. And those who go to church do so because they, they are aware of their sinfulness before the divine. And I deem myself as the worst of all miserable sinners. Now we are faced with just one question left. What is necessary at this time? Sure, you may ask. Ian, isn't that the same thing? Well, yes and no. Well, both terms are used to show an indispensable thing or point towards a thing which is an absolute must. Essential refers to things without which one cannot do, whereas necessary refers to things which cannot be avoided but can be done without. So to emphasize what is necessary at this stage in our once-in-a-lifetime pandemic experience and hopefully so that it is such, God permit, it is maximum tolerance. Anos Horribilis 2020 was a year that made us question everything, even God himself. I cannot presume divine mercy, but the fact that we are not yet instantly smitten for our doubts and disbeliefs would be a consolation in our part that we could still do something that would please whoever deity we believe in. Trust me, as a Catholic, I am aching to go to confession the very first chance I get. Kung tutusin, naka isang taon na rin ako hindi nakakapangumpisal by this point. And I really wanted to go to confession. Talagang, ano ko yan eh, um, at least man lang once a year on my birthday. Kung baga, birthday present ko na sarili ko na napatawad ako ng Diyos. But, practically, at the very least, four times a year, I I go to confession. I really wanted to do it frequently, at least man lang once a month. Depends on the it depends on someone's piety, okay? Um, kaya nang bahala dun. But for me, at the very least, I would I would need it once a year. And nakaka isang tao na ako hindi It's just uh, it's just too bad for my spiritual health. But going back, kindness to a stranger, to a neighbor, to a friend, and even to your own family would go a long way. We are all at our wit's end. And it's time for us to try to understand the situation. It is not the time to go for each other's throats. If we have to settle scores, may we set it aside at this time and deal with them once the pandemic is over should any grudge remain. But better yet, may this time be an opportunity for people to reconcile, or at least have a closure of things and amicably be on speaking terms. Easier said than done, yes. And quite honestly, I'm also preaching to myself. But ending a rivalry by letting each other live peacefully apart is a good first step towards tolerance. And in fact, interior peace. In my case, it would be a far-fetched idea, even in the literal sense. But I am still hoping that all who made and break our lives would, cons would consider thinking twice and making amends. To conclude, what we need now more than ever is our tolerance and our resolve. Whether it is manifested through one's faith or through one's reasoning, it does not matter now. The focus should now be on how to end this global pandemic once and for all. And most importantly, not to repeat history. So if you have come this far in the video, thank you very much for watching and listening to this. And uh, this may not be the, the motivational speech you want to hear, but trust me, it's something you should know. Again, I hope you would consider subscribing to this channel and buying me a coffee. And that's buymeacoffee.com slash and I would appreciate whatever support you would give to this very small content creator. And with all that said, this is Ian reminding you that every enlightenment and every insight is worth it 
as we aim for knowledge and seek wisdom, and to, at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and see you next time. Happy Easter, everyone. Ian out.